Hey, my angel sisters Gabriel and Lucifer and my holy father and brother Eternity. I am tired of watching the ancient Hebrew mythology story also known as the Old Testaments. When can I have my main star role as the son of God or the son of man? Okay, okay my, brother my brother Infinity, Infinity you can be the main, the main star, star in this gospel, gospel story, story, also known as the New Testaments. Testaments. My lovely, my lovely sisters, sisters my lovely angels, angels Gabriel, Gabriel, and Lucifer, let's play, let's play this exciting the Son of God or the Son of Man story now. I am still the Almighty Creator God also known as Yahweh or I am who I am and I will play as the Holy Father in this comic Bible story. Okay, that sounds good, my lovely brother Eternity playing as my Holy Father and the Almighty Creator God, and my lovely brother Infinity playing as the Son of God and the Son of Man. I will continue to play the Angel Gabriel. I will be the main narrator in this comic Bible story. My name Gabriel means God is my strength or God is my strong man. My main role is to be God's messenger to mankind. Okay, my lovely brother Eternity playing as my Holy Father and the Almighty Creator God, and my lovely brother Infinity playing as the Son of God and the Son of Man. I will continue to play the Angel Lucifer, also known as Satan or Devil or Tempter. I will be the main commentator and tempter in this comic Bible story. I am the angel appointed by my creator, to do temptation and adversary commentation. Lucifer happens to be traditionally the most hated character throughout history, and in the comic bible story. It is not Lucifer's fault. Lucifer was created by the creator, to do so from the beginning. Once upon a time, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac. Isaac became the father of Jacob. Jacob became the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron. Hezron became the father of Ram. Ram became the father of Aminadab. Aminadab became the father of Nashan. Nashan became the father of Salmon. Salmon became the father of Boaz by Rahab. Boaz became the father of Ob by Ruth. Ob became the father of Jesse. Jesse became the father of David the king. David became the father of Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam became the father of Abijah. Abijah became the father of Asa. Asa became the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat became the father of Joram. Joram became the father of Isaiah. Isaiah became the father of Jotham. Jotham became the father of Ahaz. Ahaz became the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh. Manasseh became the father of Ammon. Ammon became the father of Josiah. Josiah became the father of Jechonia and his brothers, at the time of the exile to Babylon. After the exile to Babylon, Jechonia became the father of Shiltiel. Shiltiel became the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel became the father of Abiud. Abiud became the father of Eliakim. Eliakim became the father of Azor. Azor became the father of Sadok. Sadok became the father of Achim. Achim became the father of Eliud. Eliud became the father of Eleazar. Eleazar became the father of Mathan. Mathan became the father of Jacob. Jacob became the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, from whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, from David to the exile to Babylon 14 generations, and from the carrying away to Babylon to the Christ, 14 generations. The New Testament provides two accounts of the genealogy of Jesus, one in the Gospel of Matthew, and another in the Gospel of Luke. Matthew starts with Abraham, while Luke begins with Adam. The lists are identical between Abraham and David, but differ radically from that point. Matthew has 27 generations from David to Joseph, whereas Luke has 42, with almost no overlap between the names on the two lists. Notably, the two accounts also disagree on who Joseph's father was. Matthew says he was Jacob, while Luke says he was Hela. Traditional Christian scholars have put forward various theories that seek to explain why the lineages are so different, such as that Matthew's account follows the lineage of Joseph, while Luke follows the lineage of Mary. Some modern critical scholars claim both genealogies as inventions, to bring the Mishnah claims into conformity with Jewish criteria. In the Gospel of Luke, the genealogy appears at the beginning of the public life of Jesus. This version is in ascending order from Joseph to Adam. I will read the genealogy according to Luke now. Once upon a time, Jesus himself, when he began to teach, was about thirty years old, being the son, as was supposed, of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Method, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Jani, the son of Joseph, the son of Matthias, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of Esli, the son of Nagai, the son of Moth, the son of Matthias, the son of Semain, the son of Joseph, the son of Judah, the son of Jonan, the son of Resa, the 
son of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the son of Miri, the son of Melchi, the son of Eti, the son of Kossim, the son of Elmudim, the son of Ur, the son of Joseph, the son of Eliezer, the son of Joram, the son of Mathet, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Jonan, the son of Eliakim, the son of Melia, the son of Menan, the son of Matatha, the son of Nathan, the son of David, the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, the son of Salmon, the son of Nashan, the son of Aminadab, the son of Aram, the son of Joram, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor, the son of Sarag, the son of Ru, the son of Peleg, the son of Eber, the son of Shelah, the son of Canaan, the son of Arphaxad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahalalel, the son of Canaan, the son of Venice, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. Matthew begins the Gospel, a record of the origin of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac, and continues on until Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Thus there were fourteen generations in all from Abraham to David, fourteen from David to the exile to Babylon, and fourteen from the exile to the Christ. Matthew emphasizes, right from the beginning, Jesus' title Christ the Greek rendering of the Hebrew title Messiah meaning anointed, in the sense of an anointed king. Jesus is presented as the long-awaited Messiah, who was expected to be a descendant of King David. Matthew begins by calling Jesus the son of David, indicating his royal origin, and also the son of Abraham, indicating that he was an Israelite, both are stock phrases, in which son means descendant, calling to mind the promises God made to David and to Abraham. Matthew's genealogy is considerably more complex than Luke's. It is overtly schematic, organized into three sets of fourteen, each of a distinct character. The first is rich in annotations, including four mothers and mentioning the brothers of Judah and the brother of Paris. The second spans the Davidic royal line, but omits several generations, ending with Deconio and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babylon. The last, which appears to span only thirteen generations, connects Joseph to Zerubbabel through a series of otherwise unknown names, remarkably few for such a long period. The total of 42 generations is achieved only by omitting several names, so the choice of three sets of 14 seems deliberate. Various explanations have been suggested. 14 is twice 7, symbolizing perfection and covenant, and is also the gematria, numerical value, of the name David. Three consecutive kings of Judah are omitted. Ahaziah, Jehosh, and Amaziah. These three kings are seen as especially wicked, from the cursed line of Ahab through his daughter Athaliah to the third and fourth generation. The author could have omitted them to create a second set of 14. Another omitted king is Jehoiakim, the father of Jeconia, also known as Jehoiachin. In Greek the names are even more similar, both being sometimes called Joachim. When Matthew says, Josiah begot Jeconia and his brothers at the time of the exile, he appears to conflate the two, because Jehoiakim, not Jeconia, had brothers, but the exile was in the time of Jeconia. While some see this as a mistake, others argue that the omission was once again deliberate, ensuring that the kings after David spanned exactly 14 generations. The final group also contains 14 generations. If Josiah's son was intended as Jehoiakim, then Jeconia could be counted separately after the exile. Some authors propose that Matthew's original text had one Joseph as the father of Mary, who then married another man of the same name. Fourteen generations span the time from Jeconia, born about 616 BC, to Jesus, born circa 4 BC. The average generation gap would be around 44 years. However, in the Old Testament, there are even wider gaps between generations. Also, we do not see any instances of paponymic naming patterns, where children are named after their grandparents, which was a common custom throughout this period. This may indicate that Matthew has telescoped this segment by collapsing such repetitions. Hey, what is the point of all those silly genealogies if my earthly mother Miriam or Mary is to be impregnated not by my stepfather Joseph, but by the Holy Spirit and my Holy Father? And I am to be born directly by the Holy Spirit and my Heavenly Holy Father? By the way, why do I need an earthly female woman to go down to the earthly ground? Couldn't you send me directly to the earthly ground, my father? Or couldn't you create me directly from the ground as you did with Adam? And what would I look like in an earthly human form? I will answer your questions. It is because of Isaiah's writing. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive, and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat, when he knows to refuse the evil, and choose the good. 
therefore before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land whose two kings you abhor shall be forsaken. For he grew up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their face he was despised, and we didn't respect him. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, struck of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was on him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and Yahweh has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, yet when he was afflicted he didn't open his mouth, as a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and as a sheep that before its shearers is mute, so he didn't open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation, who among them considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living for the disobedience of my people to whom the stroke was due, they made his grave with the wicked, and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased Yahweh to bruise him, he has put him to grief. When you shall make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of Yahweh shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By the knowledge of himself shall my righteous servant justify many, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death, and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Research on ancient skeletons in Israel suggests that Judeans of the time were biologically closer to Iraqi Jews than any other contemporary population, and thus, in terms of physical appearance, the average Judean of the time would have likely had dark brown to black hair, olive skin, and brown eyes. Judean men of the time period were on average about 1.65 meters or 5 feet 5 inches in height. The earliest depictions of Jesus from the Roman catacombs depict him as free of facial hair. Old Testament references interpreted by Christians as being about a coming Messiah, have been used to form conjectures about the appearance of Jesus. Isaiah 53, refers to the scored Messiah with no beauty that we should desire him, and Psalm 45 describes him as fairer than the children of men, these passages are often interpreted as his physical description. Historians have speculated over how Jesus' ascetic and itinerant lifestyle and work as a carpenter, with the manual labor and exposure to the elements that entailed, affected his appearance. It has been suggested that Jesus likely had a lean appearance. Enough talking. Are you ready to play as the Son of God and the Son of Man in this wonderful ancient mythological dramatic story? My brother, I mean my lovely Son of God. You are my beloved Son. In you I am well pleased. Yes, my brother, I mean my loving Heavenly God, my Almighty Creator, my Holy Father. Let's play this fantastic ancient drama. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was like this, because when his mother, Mary, had been engaged to Joseph, before they came together, she was found pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man, and not willing to make her a public example, intended to put her away secretly. But when he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, you son of David, don't be afraid to take to yourself Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She shall bring forth a son. You shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who shall save his people from their sins. Now all this has happened, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which is, being interpreted, God with us. Joseph arose from his sleep, and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took his wife to himself, and didn't know her sexually until she had brought forth her firstborn son. He named him Jesus. Is that young woman going to be my earthly mother when I go down to the earth? How old was Virgin Mary when she was impregnated by the Holy Spirit? Is Miriam healthy and mature enough to become my mother? What is Miriam's education level? Does she understand the meaning of life? Does she understand the meaning of our Holy Creator's business? There are plenty of other more mature women than that immature young woman. Why did you have to choose that immature young woman as my earthly mother? Later Christian writings and traditions and some apocryphal accounts state that at the time of her betrothal to Joseph, Mary was around 13 years old. According to ancient Jewish custom, Mary could have been betrothed at about 12. What is the meaning of my life? I think my meaning of life is to become a stepfather of this baby which I did not expect. It is not fair to me, my God. 
Why did you have to choose my young lovely and mature woman as your earthly wife to produce your holy son? Hey, Joseph, you are a very nice man. Don't worry about being a stepfather. You are not the only one. There are many sons of God other than yours. They were all impregnated by other gods just like yours. Your god seems to be in love with your young wife Miriam, so much that he impregnated your lovely young virgin wife without your permission. What can you do about it as a mere helpless mortal man? You just have to accept it and pretend to be happy with it and live with it. What a poor man you are, you a son of David. Here is the list of sons of other famous god. Perseus, son of Dany, who went on to behead Medusa and save Andromeda. Conceived when Zeus was in the form of a shower of gold. Heracles or Hercules, son of Alcmene. Conceived while Zeus was disguised as Alcmene's husband. Amphion and Zethus, twin sons by Antiope. Conceived when Antiope was raped by Zeus in the form of a satyr. Arcas, son of Callisto. Conceived while Zeus was disguised as Artemis, the only person Callisto would be with. Castor and Pollux, sons of Leda, conceived when Zeus was disguised as a swan. Myrmidon, son of Eurymedusa, said to have conceived when Zeus turned her into an ant before raping her. Of course, of course, my god. You are the almighty god who created everything in the beginning and who owns everything. I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be restrained. You once said to Job, who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered that which I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I didn't know. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. Behold, I am of small account. What shall I answer you? I lay my hand on my mouth. I have spoken once, and I will not answer, yes, twice, but I will proceed no further. My son, move your spirit, move your spirit into that, that newborn baby, baby now. In this way, this way it will be more dramatic and more impressive to mankind. And don't and worry don't about worry anything. About I, will I will always be on your back. back. I will be with you always. I will be in you and you will be in me. You have my likeness and my image. You are my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Yes, my father. I am transferring my spirit into that silly dirty dusty physical human baby body now. I am going down to the earthly dusty bag of DNA RNA clouds to obey my father's command and to enjoy silly dramas with all kinds of hypocrites and liars and Pharisees and poor prostitutes and politicians and preachers. I hate doing this, but I will do this for your love, my father. I am going down to the earthly ground just to be crucified to death in about 33 years. Don't worry, my lovely brother Infinity, I mean the son of God and the son of man. I will always follow you and watch you on your back too, just like your heavenly father. And I will do temptation as your heavenly father commanded me. We are all excited to watch who would win in this silly earthly dramatic game. I will tempt you as humanly as possible down to the earth. Please remember while you play as the son of God and the son of man on the earthly ground, for you will grow up as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground, you will have no form nor comeliness, and when we see you, there is no beauty, that we should desire you. You will be despised, and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their face you were despised, and we didn't respect you. Surely you will have borne their infirmities, and carried their sorrows, yet we esteemed you stricken, struck of God, and afflicted, but you were wounded for their transgressions, you will be bruised for their iniquities, the chastisement of their peace will be on you, and with your stripes, they are healed. All they like sheep have gone astray, they will have turned every one to their own way, and Yahweh has laid on you the iniquity of theirs all. You will be oppressed, yet when you were afflicted you should not open your mouth, as a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and as a sheep that before its shearers are mute, so you do not open your mouth. By oppression and judgment, you will be taken away. And as for your generation, who among them considered that you were cut off out of the land of the living for the disobedience of your people to whom the stroke, they will make your grave with the wicked and with a rich man in your death. Although you had done no violence, neither was any deceit in your mouth. Yet it will please you to bruise you, he has put you to grief. When you shall make your soul an offering for sin, you shall see your seed, you shall prolong your days, and the pleasure of Yahweh shall prosper in his hand. You shall see of the travail of your soul, and shall be satisfied, by the knowledge of yourself shall your righteous servant justify many, and you shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because you poured out your soul to death, and was numbered with the transgressors, yet you bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors.